for another installment of the DNVR Avalanche Trade Deadline Frenzy Deep Dives. This time we're looking at another defenseman, Dmitry Kulikov, plays for Anaheim right now. Uh, a guy I personally have always been quite fond of as someone interested in the bottom of the Avs defensive core. Gonna be a bit of an interesting fit as we can pull up his, his stats from this year. The contract's probably a little bit too expensive for a guy you're looking at for a number seven role, realistically. But the same sort of things we talked about with Jack Johnson, I think he'll do a better job than Jack Johnson would of giving you consistent, steady defense. Of the guys that you are talking about, uh, including Luke Shen, who was also somewhere in this yeah. video series, uh, of, the, of these guys you're talking about... Maybe the most well-rounded skill set, just raw skill set. Um, and so we talk about getting a seventh guy like this um, to 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 come in and play an avalanche style where it's not just be a defensive defenseman. It's not just be big. It's not just be physical, but move a puck here and there. Of, the, of Jack Johnson, Luke Shen, and Dmitry Kulikov, Kulikov is by far the best suited to do. The whole the job. Colorado thing. Yeah, yeah, the entire job for you. And we saw it like that he got the contract that he did uh, and that he took it in Anaheim. It was very weird. Everything was very weird. Um, Coming off of the year that he had in Minnesota, which was a really strong year. Now, everybody there had a strong year last season. <laughs> um, But it was it was a pretty impressive year for him with the Wild. And I... I I don't know if we if we're being honest right now. Dmitry Kulikov might be a better player and a better fit than Eric Johnson. That's where I was going to take this video exactly. Um, Surprise! <laughs> and look, and this is nothing against EJ. I think he could be a perfectly fine number six D for this hockey team. T totally. There's so much concern though with the way the, his mobility has dropped this year, yeah, with the way that the the, in, the inconsistency has risen. Um, I just, I, and, and with the way that the offense is completely cratered and when you look at Kulikov in the all around game and honestly for $2 million, if they were to get him and they were to, and he were to get into the lineup on a regular basis and he were to be a decent fit, that might be the guy that you replace Eric Johnson with next year. This so that, could be a little bit of a late season audition for next season as well. That, that was going to be my... <clears throat> My, my thing with him, I really see him in, in kind of a different, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a different tier than a Jack Johnson. I really do think that you would be more of acquiring this guy to come in and probably bump someone out. And if you're just being honest, it's probably Eric Johnson. And I just don't yeah. know... I don't know if they do that at this point. I, I, I'm not. <clears throat> I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm not saying it would be whatever. But yeah, you can understand the hesitance to do that, right? You're Especially, talking about a locker room staple, like, a leadership totally, core guy. Like totally. There's a there's a very large respect element, and it's that, to what end? Like, is Dmitry Kulikov so much better, right, than Eric Johnson that worth, you're gonna risk doing that to your locker room, right? For yeah, a guy your sixth defenseman yeah. that. When you're back to full health, Eric Johnson is probably totally fine as your number six for yeah. the remainder of this it, season. Our feelings about EJ have been shaped by the fact that he's played in a top four role, sometimes top right. three role, this season as the injuries have persisted on their defense right. all year. Right. And, and here's the thing, as we can bring up his, uh, his career, yeah, his player card, that's good. Uh, We're talking about him, oh, he's super good, and oh, he might be better than Eric Johnson, <laughs> and this and that. And yeah. then you look at this, and you're like, that's going in the I, wrong direction well, I will there. Say, same thing with EJ when you look at the competition level. Well, yeah, but are you really want, yeah. are you wanting to replace EJ and, at and the deadline? This is my answer to Not this really. question. I think this is more about reliable injury insurance than it is yes. Jack Johnson. With Jack Johnson, he's a hard number seven. With Kulikov, if you're going into the deadline and you have defensemen still banged up, I think that's where it starts to make more sense for Colorado. So, I, look... And is he really I, I worth re, the two I, million dollar price tag? Probably not right. for Colorado. And my thing, going all the way back to the Pulley RV one, I just worry about a move like this 
handcuffing you too much right. to do something else this, and you're really talking about a bottom of your lineup is, kind of guy. This is far more a secondary move where sure. if they've done something at their forward core and they feel comfortable there and they have the space for a Kulikov, yeah. I think it makes more sense. It's not something you go do and then they go, oh, well, we can't well, afford now Jonathan yeah, Taves yeah, yeah. now. We're, we're done. Yeah. yeah. That would be bad business for sure. So I, I do think it's a bit of a tough fit for Colorado, but it, to me... Of the guys that are like on trade block lists, I think Kulikov would be the best defenseman they could go out and get. Well, and AJ, your point of a potential audition for next year is interesting as well. Yeah, where you know that you could just see, hey, like this team clearly doesn't trust Curtis McDermott as a full time defenseman. Right. Even though he's on a multi year deal, like they, so he's probably not going to be the sixth guy. EJ's expiring. The way that his game looks, you know, he, look, he, maybe he retires, maybe he doesn't. You know, we don't know where that goes. And you could just see where the team would have an interest in saying, we like this guy. We're going to bring this guy in now to try and not only help with this well, year, but we might be able to get a jump on some of our summer work. If you do that, too, you know, may, it's a good bridge to say a couple of years down the line when you're looking at a Sean Barons or a Ryan Merkley or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You have a guy on a couple year deal to to fill a hole there. Now I know there's other conversation like Taves contract yeah. there as well, but at 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 worst you could be looking him looking at him as a bit of a stopgap in your defense for sure. And I do also want to reiterate uh, a point that I made uh, in one of our other videos. Look, the environment in Anaheim has brought down a lot of results. Mm. Um, Dallas Eakins has not proved to be a very good head coach. So well, when you look at when I mean, you look at Kulikov's play bring in up a his competitive entire role, career here and you'll you'll see a yeah, little Yeah, when you have Kulikov in an, in a in a more competitive environment, you've seen really good you play out of him. Just go back 2 years and you see two super solid defensive seasons in Minnesota there. Yeah, like he's been he's been a good player in the league for a long time. Yep. Uh and, and it's not like it's not like those days are so far gone like last year right and the environment that he's in in anaheim is problematic yep especially for defensemen where we've got other guys that we're going to be doing videos on you know they they're kind of uh, between shattenkirk and kulikov and klingberg they're trying to sell the whole defense right yep. and you you kind of have a you have too many of one type of dude on that defense where it's just it 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 just hasn't worked for them this year and all of those guys, I think, have, have brought out the worst in each other, <laughs> where all of them have bad numbers that I think were, have gotten, that, that have been made worse by the environment that they're in. We can yeah. bring up the, the career arcs as well as we start to wrap this video up. Yeah, here. you see his defense in the middle of the graph right there. You see that, that big arc. You, you would you'd be betting on a little bit of a bounce back for sure. Yeah, you'd be betting that being in Colorado is better for him than Anaheim. Right. Is right. the big thing there. <laughs> the offense, the defense, whatever. He's never that been that great of a PK guy. Uh, you're not asking him to. And, and you look at the minutes that he's been playing yeah. in Anaheim. That's you're, too many you're minutes. You're dropping him back down to the last You see a years. direct correlation. We saw with Jack Johnson. You yeah. see a direct correlation with defensemen that get overplayed. They crater. Their numbers go down. Their effectiveness goes down because they shouldn't be playing that role. Kale McCarr to a different extent this year, but Still again, true, just like yeah. to follow the right. trend of you get overexerted. I don't care who you are. It's exactly your play. if you're in too big of a role, yeah. it has it's the law of diminishing returns. Yeah, and you're seeing that, and you see it quicker with guys like a caliber of a Kulikov than right, with a Kale right, McCarr. Right, right, right. Uh, but obvious. you you see it, and and that's where. The Avs can bring guys in and and foster a better environment for them to be in and say, hey, we don't need you to do all this stuff mm -hmm. for us. We just need you to do this one thing. Mm -hmm. Any world where they convince Anaheim to retain? Yeah, absolutely. Anna They've got retention spots, the, so they can do it, and like, it's an expiring deal. Like, you're fine. I, I hear you. I, I do wonder if they're thinking more at saving those spots for Klingberg for a couple well, of other well, I know, but, but They definitely can try and use them all, I think. I was going to say, yeah, you're talking deadline, especially depending on if and when a deal like this was to get done. Maybe you've already done a couple of those. You already know kind of what your situation is. You get five, right? You get three. Three? Yeah, it's three. Yeah. Huh. Well, hey, there you go. <laughs> cool cop, Klingberg, and Shattenkirk. Shatten done. Forget the forwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Look, especially if you get him to retain, you get it down to a million and change. 
I think maybe then it becomes a little bit more of a conversation of, hey, we can just have a really strong seventh D at that point. But again, it's going to come down to where the abs are at at the deadline. I also think you don't make that move unless you have not been able to find something else. Yeah. At say you haven't been able to find a forward fit that you yeah, really I, like. I agree with and that. And you're like, hey. We don't want to do nothing. We might as well spend to the cap. Here. Exactly. Yeah. We're not going to be able to get the forward that we wanted. We're not just gonna. We're not just gonna go get another fourth line guy. We're already kind of set there. Let's go. Let's go and get a seventh D, who's much better than a seventh D that we can actually fit in uh, to a, to a real role here if we need him or if he just outplays somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I I like that. It's a good spot to end this one. Should the Avs go get Kulikov or should they target another defenseman? Let us know down in the comments. Like and subscribe here on YouTube for more of these videos on the trade deadline frenzy. We will see you in the next one.